two incredible race days around the snow. Now it's time to go and see some sand. Welcome to race day three of the Drone Champions League split three. With these seven teams, I'm Matt Andrews and we're heading to Saudi Arabia where we finished our 2023 season. First up on the matches today, Raiden Racing bring in IQ0, Valprim, Vicen Mayan, and Bartu. That is an unchanged lineup from when we saw them last time. And this week they're going up against our wildcard pilots, looking to show the teams what they can do. It's Flo Chelly, West FPV, Chug Akva, and Bambi again. The second matchup between our teams features the Americans of Quad Force One, who've got QTFPV, Propsicle, Hyper, and Shane, who was unable to take part on race day two, but he's here for number three. And they're going up against the China Dragons, who have an unchanged lineup with Sir Peter, Creator Gamer, Star 23467, and Shady. SDT are currently on top of the leaderboard, but they're on a bye week, so here's an opportunity for the other teams to gain on them. As you can see, matchups spread all the way down, and they're going to come to you like this. Each matchup has three races. First two pilots from each team will race each other, then the other two from each team will battle, and then all eight pilots will race in the DCL Big Heat. And if you win any of those, it's four points for a win, then three for second, two for third, one place if you're coming in fourth, and nothing if you're behind that in the Big Heat. The team who clocks up the most points from the three races gets three points for the season. Time to go racing, everybody. To get us underway on day three, it's Raiden Racing against the wildcard team with Vasem Mayan and Bartu against Chug Agfa and West. Our first race of our first matchup underway into a triple court screw with all the drones in there very tightly packed. Now we do the first of our climbs in this beautiful desert location out in Saudi Arabia, where we completed our 2023 season. Vincent Mayan from Raider, just ahead of Bartu. Then we have West. Oh, and Bartu might get caught by West as Bartu just got stopped in his tracks. And he's still flying out in second, following his teammate Vicen as they now go to this climb through a ring. Then up comes this really tricky gate, five of them down, back and forth, weaving your way. You want to invert and go as fast as possible down towards the ground, but you've nevertheless got to move in and out of those rings in opposite directions. That's towards the end of lap number one. Here's Bartu on lap number two. There's his teammate who's in the lead. Vicen Mayan coming diving through. One and two of these gates and then a split S off of the wall. He'll split us here and go into the quadruple A2RL corkscrew, still followed by Bartu FPV in second place. The Turkish pilot for Raiden Racing doing very well as he completes the waffle. There's the exit of that. He's still in second and he's not being challenged at all by the wildcard team. West is over 10 seconds behind Bartu in third and Chug Akva a few more behind. So the red drone's nowhere in sight for the yellow team. Vicen Mayan is going to be the first one to start. Lap number three, Bartu only just coming out of that cleanly. That was a wobble. Vicen on the climb up on the far side of the rock. Now down through these two, split S on those. Another split S here and the court screw awaits him as Bartu is heading towards that now. Nearly just over four, nearly five seconds behind his teammate. This waffle, it's so difficult to explain. It's a ladder up to the left hand, a split S in the middle and a ladder up again. I'll try and keep up with them and hopefully help you keep up with them as well. Here's these five gates down alongside Elephant Rock, this legendary natural piece of beauty here in Alula. And as Bartu goes into the Fox Ear Tunnel, his teammate Vicen Mayan picks up yet another win for his team of raid and racing. Bartu is in second and Chagagwa will come in just over 10 seconds behind the two from Raiden. Good to see Bartu in second place there, not too far behind his teammate Vicen Mayan. Bartu's definitely learning from racing with these previous world champions. 
Here's Bartu's route into the top of the corkscrew, just hugging it a little too tightly, but a decent escape, and he got on his way without too much time lost. Fusen showing us how it's done. Valprim and IQ Zero next up for Raiden Racing, and it's Bambi and Flocelli from the World Cards. Pretty deadly pairing for Raiden, this. Bambi and Flocelli with a lot to do. Let's take a look at IQ Zero as he goes for the climb through the ring. Oh no, he's missed the turn. He's just dropped out of it too early. Oh, that sent him from first to fourth. Oh, just trying to make it as tight as he can, but just not going through. So Valprim's taking up the lead instead and Bambi trying to hang on to him and there's not many pilots who can. Valprim knots his way out of the waffle and so does Bambi. That's good, Bambi trying to stay in contention with him. Following Valprim up the climb on Elephant Rock. Just a little bit wild on some of those turns, which is why Valprim has managed to put nearly five seconds between him and Bambi. And in fact, IQ Zero has caught him and passed him. So it's another raid and one, two at the moment as we're on to lap number two. Here's IQ Zero. Gabriel out of Australia racing for Raiden Racing. This time he's got to go through and does. And also not too scared of it. Good to see. You'd have thought some pilots might have gone through quite a long way to ensure they got it. But IQ Zero knows what he's doing. Learned quickly from the mistake he made. There's Valprim and his trail showing you how to do it. There's another one for IQ Zero laddering up and out. Hopefully everybody's getting their heads around that waffle now. The climb around the rock is a little bit dizzying. Well, Valprim has already finished it, come down and is into the Foxier Tunnel for his third lap to begin. Valprim has managed to put 10 seconds, maybe some more between him and IQ Zero, and it's about five between IQ Zero and the challenge from the other team. That's in the hands of Bambi, one of the pilots out of the UK here. And Flo Celli is a long way behind. This track clearly not flowing for him. Valprim, though, look at that. So good around the court screw. The ladder up, the split S down, and then a ladder up again. Valprim on his way to another win. IQ Zero hugging that. That was beautifully done. And not slow in any of these other more technical parts either. It's going very well for the team in Raiden with a 7-3 lead after their first race, thanks to Vicen Mayan and Bartu. Now Valprim and IQ Zero, short of any kind of massive disaster, are going to get another one too. The first part's done for Valprim. Here comes the three more points for second place. IQ Zero's got it. Sadly, the wildcard team a long way behind in the Saudi desert. Valprim picks up another win. That's three race days and three wins in the 2v2 races for him. Let's watch his teammate on that first climb. No, IQ Zero just didn't go through. Still managed to come home in second place, though. Valprim with the two wildcard drones, not too far away on lap number one, but they couldn't stick with him throughout. Very, very few pilots have been able to keep with Valprim at any time during this season. I said he's won three out of the head-to-heads. Can he win the big heat today? Or another member of Raiden, or is this where the wildcard team starts to show their teeth? They've really got to throw themselves at this. And out we fly. Flo Chili, just the last one to complete the first court screw. It is two Raiden pilots. It's them again. Valprim and Vicen Mayan. They're the first ones to be diving back down towards the sandy floor. Into the court screw. Mayan sees Valprim pass him during it. That's how tight they are flying this. Another there are drones in every single direction, but thankfully nobody seeming to crash and get into real problems there. Descend on his way down. Look at that. You don't see the gates. They're all just disappearing around you as you go on that descent. That is a really technical obstacle. I don't think we've had one of those in the DCL for a very long time. Now the pilots have got to get to grips with something that they haven't been challenged with recently. Here's Vicen out on his second lap. That's just the split S, that's just the two rings, not the five down the side of Elephant Rock, which come up in a little while. He's into the court screw, IQ Zero behind him in third, Valprim in front of him in first. Now Valprim will be the first one to climb back up again. And Vicen might show us the way down with Valprim, not far ahead, two tenths of a second. He's gaining on him. Now out of that split S, and we might get a little bit of a battle on for the win here between Valprim and Vicen Mayan. IQ Zero might fancy a sniff at it too, but he's got a bit of catching up to do. Unfortunately, the last of the scoring positions, fourth place for the one point that comes with it. That is currently the only thing the wildcard team are looking like they can get. But Bartu from Raiden, their fourth pilot, is a long way behind. So maybe Chagakfa can keep that. Look at this between Vincent and Valprim. 
Bow Prim just managing to stay ahead of the end for now. Mayan trying to get him on that turn. That was really good. How good is he on the drop here? Look at that. It's perfect. But Valprim's still there. I told you how good he is. Mayan trying to get him on that last turn. Now we're going to go for one more split test. And Mayan maybe just edging him out in the end by one hundredth of a second. IQ Zero has the third. And there'll be a point for the wildcard team thanks to Chugakfa. Bar two managed to move up past all of the other red drones. One hundredth of a second though between first and second. Those two pilots winning races and loving racing each other. What a battle between the Raiden guys for the win. Here's Vicen on the descent on the first lap. By that point, Valprim in front of him, still in front of him here. But Vicen, he is just the best finisher in the DCL. Never give up. That final corner, he's stolen wins from Valprim like that before. He's stolen them from other teams too. Vicen takes this one with Raiden Racing winning out overall by a big margin of 23 points to 7. Now let's go for our second matchup of race day three. It's Quad Force One from America against the China Dragons. Last race day, Shane couldn't fly, but he's here with QTFPV against Creator Gamer and Shady. And we're on board with Shane right now as he pushes his way past the drones, all very tightly packed on the climb and on the way down, starting to stretch a little bit. That's good flying from him and QTFPV, who's about a quarter of a second behind him. They're into the corpse group. Creator Gamer, the German pilot for China Dragons, trying to keep hold of them. And Shady, trying to stay close as well. But he's really starting to struggle already. So Creator Gamer is the best hope here for China Dragons. And he's been with the team for quite some time. QTFPV, as I said, he was racing all by himself on race day two. And he fought well. He actually did really well with just the three pilots. So Shane will now show them what they were missing. And he's already on to lap number two in the lead. But look at this, QTFPV, his teammate, just trying to go past him. Nearly did on the split S, now on the climb and the dive down. QTFPV is showing some really good moves so far in split three. And Shane down off the first part of the court screw onto the sand. And QTFPV is three seconds ahead of him. So now we've got a bit of a race on. Oh, and Shane, no! The ladder in the first part of the waffle. That might cost you second place. Never mind first. QTFPV is on his way up. Shane still managing to hang on to second in front of Creator Gamer. QTFPV down through the rings, not as quick past Elephant Rock as perhaps the Raiden team was earlier. Shane here in second, sees his teammate, and this is going to be like the earlier races, where the two Raiden pilots weren't happy with one of them winning and the other one just settling for second, instead they scrapped it out for that win. I think with one lap to go, Shane will be trying to hunt QTFPV down, and he's a little bit closer than he was. Now into the corkscrew. Good pre-turn. Not scared of it. It crashed him earlier, but he's okay so far. And he's being bowled again into the waffle, and it has cost him. Hasn't cost him second. Has cost him a chance to take the lead off of QTFPV. Could he be getting another win? He's not had many for Quad Force 1, but that's one of the drawbacks of being on a team with some incredible pilots like Hyper and Propsicle. Shane hits another split S. QTFPV leads him out to the finish. There it is. And Shane manages to get second place two seconds behind him. But he gave Creator Gamer and Shady every chance to catch him and take that second place away. And instead, he made a lot of mistakes. China Dragons still couldn't take advantage of them. QTFPV picking up the win for his team. Looks nice with the drones coming down alongside Elephant Rock and those smooth curves in and out. That one, though, for Shane, that's not a line he'll be happy about. Boldly following the court screw the next time. And again, but then into the waffle. While he goes through the ladder too high, knocks him down and it's a rocky recovery. 
Here come their teammates. They're no stranger to winning. Hyper and Propsicle, but the return of Star 23467 back to the team he used to fly with. And Zapita coming off his runner up in China recently at an incredible real life race. Well, let's see what they can do here. Propsicle in the front. Then it's Star, Hyper, and Zapita. Propsicle through the court screw. So tidy. This is going to be really smooth. And you can just see Zapita there, which gives you an idea how close all four pilots are, as he's the one in fourth place. We've jumped on board with Hyper, and it was almost impossible to tell as he and Propsicle are so close to each other. But Hyper is now the one in the lead, just fractionally squeezed past Propsicle. Now about a quarter of a second between the two of them. There's the split S moving back around. Star following them onto lap number two. So Peter, not too far away, but he slipped a little bit more. Here's the climb up the rock. And then the dive down the other side, and Propsicle's got Hyper right in his sights. That was a bold move. Propsicle turning a bit earlier than Hyper. That's why he's caught him into the court screw. And Propsicle is great in these, but Hyper just staying in front of him. Now there's the ladder up, the split S, and the ladder out for Propsicle. Just a little bit wider, perhaps, than Hyper. And it's those tiny little gaps that can add up over time. They weave their way down towards the end now of lap number two with star two, three, four, six, seven. Still hanging on to them, but that gap now about three seconds. Propsicle wanting to get on the inside of Hyper and he's giving it everything he can. This is really great flying from these two American pilots. And whatever Propsicle is doing, Hyper is matching it. And in the corkscrew, Hyper is better. Watch, he's much more fluid from right to left, where Propsicle is a little bit more vertical. Hyper has put two tenths of a second more between him and Propsicle in that obstacle alone. Not really pressure on Hyper right now. It's his teammate who's chasing him. It's going to be a lot of points for Quad Force 1 either way. And yet Hyper, oh, it's a bit deep. So is that one. Or oh, a correction for the fourth. Propsicle back on his tail. There's only one tenth or so between the two of them on these final turns. But Hyper will hang on. Oh, ho, ho, the dive down at Elephant Rock. Propsicle wanted that win. Hyper nearly let him have it. But instead, this man leads out his teammate and captain for maximum points here. Here's Hyper's view as he goes down the descent. Look at that. Turning left all the way. That's nicely done. Some pilots will go left, right, left, right. Here's another look at a court screw. This is the second lap. That one was better for Propsicle, but the third lap was much better for Hyper, as I said. And then, so close between the two Americans. It's big heat time. What can China Dragons do against the Quad Force One, who look like they're on really good form today? They could outscore them, but it would be an enormous achievement to do so, particularly with the American team seemingly having their choice of winners here. Propsicle, Chain, Hyper, QT, FPV, the front four places. And then with them still, well, Zapita was right there, but he's dropped a little bit, and so has Star, but Shane crashes in the waffle again. Right, there's one for the taking for China Dragons, but they need a lot more. And instead, it's the Propsicle and Hyper battle out in front again. Hyper, a little bit tidier on the descent. This is Propsicle's view as he tries to catch him again through the Foxeer Tunnel. Not got him yet. Good split S, good pre-turn. On to lap number two. They're one and two. It's star two, three, four, six, seven. You can see there has moved up into third. He's past Shane. He's past QT FPV as well. So while it is blue in one and two, China Dragons still in those scoring positions, but not anywhere like enough points or enough pilots. Now Hyper leads prop again out of the waffle. He's still there in front. There's a lot more activity, of course, on the track with eight pilots in it. So Hyper will see other drones down near the sand while he's climbing up. But he is way ahead of them. So that's nothing for him to worry about. Propsicle against Hyper. And one lap ago, Star 23467 was flying into this. But there you go. Shane is in third. QTFPV is rounding out the top four. The star has lost some time. China Dragons just cannot get to grips with flying around this beautiful location in Alula. Oh, now Hyper makes a mistake. 
That's let Propsicle get in front of him. That's let Shane move up into second as well. Look at Hyper fighting with Shane now. Wants that place back. And then he'll try and catch Propsicle. And the other orange drones are starting to get a little bit closer now. As Star has moved up into fourth. But that's by virtue of QTFPV dropping down into fifth and losing a whole load of time. So Zapeter, another one of the China Dragons, might fancy getting past him. But it is not anywhere near the points. First, second, and third are all Quad Force 1. Star will get the one solo point. Little consolation that it is coming in in fourth, just ahead of QTFPV. Somehow in that first lap, it all was going wrong early for China Dragons. Propsicle gets another win on his incredible record with the DCL. Had to fight for it, but only with his own teammates. Now Shane getting caught out on that turn on the ladder up in the waffle, so you won't want to ever see that again. Hyper was brilliant on these descents, but going into this court screw, trying to catch Propsicle, just rattles off the first gate a bit. Usually people crash during the court screw, not on the way in. Regardless, Quad Force 1, a big performance. They absolutely demolished China Dragons, 23 points to 7. Earlier this year in split one, it was a tie, and in split two, it was a close win. So it's going wrong for China Dragons. Mac one couldn't field their pilots due to one of them being injured, which means Cyclone get a default 3-0 win. That keeps them top of the leaderboard. SDT are on a bye week. Raiden and Quad Force One have managed to put a little bit more room between themselves and the teams who are without a win so far. And they are all going to be battling here again on race day four. It's Cyclone's turn for a bye week. So everyone wants to move up a bit closer to them. I'm Matt Andrews. Join us for all of that action in the desert and we'll see you in the skies.